Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for taking the time in your busy day for joining us in that uh, exciting webinar, How to Ensure Quality and Compliance in the Implementation of uh, Single-Use Systems. Uh, my name is uh, Geoffroy Malherbe. I'm uh, one of uh, the three people in, uh, in Europe focusing on the business development for single-use uh, technologies as part of Thermo Fisher Scientific. Let me take you through the agenda we have for today. Um, at the end of this introduction, we're going to have some focus on um, the rigid single-use systems. Uh, the talk will be provided by uh, my colleague Alan Fowler, who uh, carries European responsibility on those product lines. And then uh, Kemi, they're also really one of our subject matter experts, um, very actively working in some industry associations related to single use, is going to take us through uh, the risk mitigation strategies uh, for flexible single use systems and uh, give you a, a sneak peek of next generation containment technology, uh, which uh, we will be bringing to, to your attention briefly, shortly. Uh, followed by Anthony Perret from uh, our bioprocessing equipment and automation team, is going to take us through uh, the details of data quality and safety, which have become today an important part of ensuring compliance uh, with uh, single-use technologies. And we will finish with a short Q&A. So you will see um, on your uh, in, on your interface uh, with uh, with Workcast, you should be able to see a field where you can populate questions. I encourage you to, to start uh, writing your questions along the way of the webinar so that uh, at the end, when there will be a Q&A, we have the opportunity to go uh, through the, the questions uh, asked by the audience for everybody's benefit. So feel free to, to use uh, the, the, the question field throughout uh, today's webinar. So why are we uh, bringing that, that webinar and that topic to you today? Uh, it's related to the importance of single-use uh, technologies in, in today's bioprocessing market. So about 20 years ago, um, uh, most of the, the oldest single-use uh, manufacturing facilities have starting to get active. And sometimes it was related to actually just packaging a product, and the package was not their product. It can have been historically uh, serum or, or many other forms of product. And over time, the importance of the container over the content uh, for those companies have become essential. And, and like Thermo Fisher Scientific, they've raised their level of quality in order for the, the demanding biopharmaceutical industry to become able to apply those technologies in, in more and more segments of their, their bioprocess and the, the, the bioprocessing community, the vaccine, human and animal, the recombinant proteins and other fields of pharmaceutical manufacturing, they've really seen the benefit in an increasing way. Uh, and this industry has structured over time um, related to some uh, also industry groups such as uh, BPSA, for instance, which is very dear to the heart of Thermo Fisher Scientific and, and to my heart as well. Uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, really there's been um, the game, the quality game has raised over the years so that today those single-use technologies they can be employed in an ever-increasing level of, of criticality for bioprocessing. And obviously, like in, in the rest of the industry, there's nothing more can, can really happen without data management today. And we thought that it would be very important uh, to give you also an overview about um, the data security aspect of, of single use today. So not just cleanliness, particulates, but also how your, your data is going to be part of your um, compliance strategy. Um, a couple of numbers related to, to that segment of, uh, of single-use bioprocessing, and in particular, the middle, the middle number, 85% of biopharma manufacturing citrines use single-use systems today, and 65% of all drug shortages are caused by manufacturing and quality issues, which tells a lot about the, the huge importance of uh, compliance in implementing single-use technologies today. Uh, what is our part in, in that? We are some official scientists. Scientific. Uh, our mission is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. 
And uh, we've become over the years a fairly sizable organization to do this uh, with uh, over 70,000 employees, a number of divisions. One of those divisions is our bioproduction division, which serves the entire biomanufacturing workflow with both uh, flexible and rigid single-use solutions, which are manufactured all over the world to offer unprecedented security of supply to our customers. And we've been, over the years, one really of the contributors and one of the, the pillars of the industry in in bringing uh, some reflection, thinking discussions around uh, compliance, around uh, harmonization. Uh, and uh, and today's webinar is a, is a logical uh, consequence of that attitude. Later on, we'll have more detail about all of the uh, quality in our manufacturing uh, operations. I will leave that to uh, to the next speakers to walk you through this. Uh, and and yeah, before um, closing that introduction about the topic and about thermo Fisher Scientific, I just need to to highlight that indeed quality and safety, as you can see, is is on the wheel of our main value proposition in the bioproduction division, which is uh, what we call bioprocessing by design and bringing bioprocessing uh, with compliance, with quality and safety is an essential part of that. With that, I'm very happy to introduce uh, the next speaker, Alan Fowler, who is going to uh, walk you through the rigid solution side of ensuring quality and compliance in implementing single-use technologies. Hello, good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, something which is relatively ubiquitous in uh, bioprocessing, um, bottles and carboys. Um, we, we normally distinguish the four elements that we try and provide to customers around these bottles. I'll be focusing on the top two of these um, titles um, for, for purposes of today and not going into much detail about operational excellence and um, customer service and responsiveness, but understanding that they're critical to the way that we support our customers. Because these products are so ubiquitous in the, uh, in the processing environment, I would say that poor selection or poor specification of these containers can lend a, a real impact um, in the way that they're applied. And I'll be talking today about how we can try and select the right product fit, but also some of the advances we're doing to um, further mitigate risk. As I said before, um, thermoscientific rigid solutions or bottles and carboys can be used throughout the, 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 the process. Um, often the product selection is very different at the front end of the process during cell line development to, for example, uh, ones that might be used in downstream processing and, and obviously uh, higher specification required towards um, bulk storage and, and final fill on the right hand um, half of this, this diagram. And I'll be trying to explain how uh, to advise on the, the specifications of this product and what we should be looking for um, dependent on the, on the application and the criticality uh, of that application to the process. Nalgene bottles and carboys come in a bewildering uh, variety of shapes, sizes and mat materials. And maybe part of the problem in trying to determine what the right specification is, is, is simply this, this array of products. Of course, a portfolio as, as large as this means that we've, we've definitely got the right bottle for the right application. And with some simple rules, um, it's quite straightforward to whittle this down to the appropriate pro product choice. Simply speaking, um, there are three considerations for choosing the best, uh, the best product for your, or the application fit. It's the material that the product's made from. We, often call that the resin, uh, the specification in terms of the quality requirements, um, maybe the particulate burden and, and um, endotoxin uh, specifications of that, and whether the, the product should be sterilized or, or packaged and so forth. Um, and then there's the physical characteristics, perhaps goes without saying, we ought to make sure that the volume is appropriate to, to the application. But also, you know, the footprint in terms of shipping and storage and how the fluid is going to move in and out of those containers. So the material construction, 
in terms of its compatibility with the application, the level of stringency around the specifications and the physical characteristics are always the three starting points to determine what the, what the right bottle is. In our portfolio, therefore, we have you know, large, robust tanks and containers for bulk storage, maybe mixing buffers and storing buffers and so forth. The specifications of these might not be as high as something used in final fill, but they're useful at larger volume ranges. Similarly, maybe the next category up is the carboys and jerry cans, again, increasing specifications such as validation binders and extraction studies are available for many of these products. Again, maybe uh, not, the, not the most stringent specifications in our product range. There are some containers which it seems everybody recognizes, like the almost ubiquitous, what we call a sterile square media bottle. These are really versatile and um, useful for a, a number of applications, perhaps amongst our most popular product ranges. These have validation binders, but they also have um, varieties of these bottles which have a higher cleanliness standard and uh, higher specifications around particulates. So this is a, a sort of catch-all bottle for many applications, I would say. Perhaps the most, one of the most common product lines used in bioprocessing is the, uh, the range of bioattainer bottles and carboys. These are very highly uh, validated containers with um, really top of the range specifications, but they're also useful because they can be, they're robust and they can be frozen with their contents without risking the integrity of the container closure system. So these are very useful um, in that final fill um, storage um, sort of arena when the, when the product is really getting to be uh, very valuable indeed. We also have some more specialist bottles like uh, the FP, FEP and PFA bottles. These are highly chemical and temperature resistant, and they also have uh, a degree of uh, product recovery, which is unparalleled in the other resins. So simply speaking, if the product is very valuable and every single last drop needs to be recovered, these are a good choice. But also for some of the more aggressive chemicals used in uh, API manufacture, uh, these can be used too. So we have a range of standard products which can be used from uh, relatively low-fi applications such as um, buffer mixing, waste management, that sort of thing, through uh, general high-quality bottles for use of uh, fluid management in bioprocessing intermediates, all the way through to uh, the containers which could be trusted with uh, the very valuable end end product from a from a process and some specialist ones in between to deal with um, uh, particularly uh, challenging applications. As you would expect with products that are aimed at applications in the bioprocessing in industry, um, we have a comprehensive um, support mechanism to provide the sort of regulatory documentations that, that our customers would expect. The validation package is not the same for all products. Um, obviously, there's, there's a big difference between a, um, uh, maybe a tank that's being used to collect waste and a biotainer that's used to store final product. And the validation boxes often reflect that. Um, but uh, th this always worth reaching out to your uh, local thermoscientific uh, representative to understand the validation package uh, meets the requirements of the application before you choose uh, the container. With all aspects of bioprocessing, the regulatory landscape seems to constantly be changing and the role of vendors such as Thermoscientific is to keep up with this. And these uh, containers, these rigid containers for use in bioprocessing are no different. In particular, at the moment, we see that more and more of our customers are focused on USP 788. Um, which is a standard related to uh, intrinsic particulate load. Um, they want to mitigate the risk of um, particulate entering their process, of course, but also want to mitigate risk around regulatory compliance. And with that in mind, we're introducing uh, new products um, 
increasingly, but also being able to offer custom services for customers who are happy to use their the containers, want to minimize the exposure to product change control, um, and but, but want to increase the specification of their bottles. And that's what I'm going to talk about next. It might sound simple, but a rinse of a container with water for injection under very controlled and validated conditions can reduce the particulate load on, um, on containers. And uniquely, we have um, the capabilities to perform this um, with a washer and dryer system, which is validated to uh, bioproduction standards. And this can dramatically increase the specification of our products around particulate load. We can do uh, volumes from small vials from a few microliters in size, all the way up to a carboy of 50 liters. And we can pr do process, process products uh, of our own, which are typically made of resin, or other vendors' products, sometimes made of glass, for example. We offer a range of other services, but the one that particularly seems to be meeting uh, requirements of bioprocessing at the moment is, as I said, this water for injection, rinse and dry to reduce particulate load. And the theory behind this is that depending on uh, the application fit here, you might choose uh, a base product, um, which is um, uh, one of the standard products that we offer where the specification sort of varies depending on the manufacturing environment. You might choose um, one of our products which is certified clean. Uh, this is a product which is manufactured in a very controlled environment and the intrinsic part, particle load is naturally very low. No further processing is required other than validating the product and making sure that the quality assurance um, processes are in place to routinely measure um, the, the specifications around particulates and endotoxin. And then finally, we have what we call our certified platinum clean. And that's the sort of product I was talking about earlier, where we've introduced a water for injection rinse with validated cleaning to reduce a product which is made in a, a standard environment and bring it up to a, a specification which actually exceeds those of the products that are made in a controlled environment. We call this a, a tiered portfolio, a good, better, best scenario, if you, if you like. And your um, thermoscientific application specialist can support you in making sure that we choose the container which is appropriate to your application. So these good, better, best options are part of our standard product line, but of course there will be products that people are using that aren't part of this sort of tiered product portfolio yet. And other um, customers of ours want uh, a different type of uh, uh, specification to that which is standard perhaps in the bioprocess environment. So I've spoken before about our capabilities to uh, provide a water for injection, rinse and dry for bone particulate. But our capabilities also include uh, various forms of sterilization, um, endotoxin treatment, silonization, and reduction of organic um, co content load. So again, we, we offer, uh, aside from our, our standard portfolio, we can often customize specifically for clients um, who have uh, the specific application demands. And we work closely with end users to divide the specifications and the requirements provide, required at their point of application. So, as I said right at the beginning of this presentation, we have a, 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 a perhaps a baffling array of products, a huge product range, a very broad portfolio, perhaps the most the broadest on the market to meet fluid management needs across the bioprocess. Product choice can be simplified by focusing on the physical chemical compatibility of the product, the, the, the type of resin that we're choosing. It can be focused on the shape and size requirements. And of course, what I've talked about most is perhaps tailoring the specifications of these products to meet the needs of the, of the, of the application. To help with this, we have an online tool called the Nalgene Bottle and Carboy Selection Guide where some of these characteristics can be entered into an online tool 
and it will restrict the range of products to those specifications. This is a really e easy way to focus in on a handful of products rather than considering the whole range at once. As you would expect, we have regulatory documentation available um, and those regulations increase as we go through our high specification variants known as the certified clean, those containers made in a controlled environment and those platinum clean options, the containers which have had some onward processing to further enhance their specifications. If these still don't meet the needs of, 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 um, of challenging applications, we of course have custom cleaning services available. And outside perhaps the scope of this presentation, we can also customize these containers with tubing for fluid management. Should you require any additional support, we have a range, we have a, we have a, a dedicated team of technical sales specialists, field application specialists, and a project management office to support customers with product selection and with uh, discussions around customization. And with that, I'd like to conclude this presentation. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, so hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Camille Derusso. I'm Field Application Specialist for Western Europe. And in the next 20 minutes, I would like to introduce you to integrity and particle management in single-use assemblies. As we previously explained, Thermo is able to provide you single-use assemblies with rigid containment. Alan just talked about it, but also with flexible containment known as bioprocess containers. We also provide hardware that could support uh, these flexible containments such as mixer or bioreactors or storage solutions. In this presentation, we will focus on integrity and particle management for flexible solution. Thermo is providing single-use assemblies since 1999, so nearly 20 years, uh, and we offer um, specialty BPCs such as bioreactors and mixers since 2006. Single use are widely used into the process and integrity is a critical topic more and more as explained by Jeff previously. We do offer four film. Uh, this will increase the security of supply. The two first one, ages and six, five fourteens, are the historical uh, Thermo Fisher film, previously known as iClone film. The ISI 2677 is a P film coming from an acquisition uh, ISI technology, and the ISI 28 is an FEA film. Uh, for 2D bags. So, what is BPC integrity? As explained previously, single use has many advantages and is widely used uh, in the industry, including in critical applications such as a final step close to the sterilizing grade filter. Uh, it is also used in the vaccine industry in fully enclosed sterile process. So we defined um, integrity as the closure of the system and the prevention of microbial ingress under specific condition. It is very important for our end user that no microorganism penetrate into the uh, single-use assemblies. But where and how do leaks occur? A leak can be a hole in the bag itself on the face or at a chamber port interface, but it can be also what we call a tortuous pass, which is a leak at a connection uh, between a port or a tubing or a fitting and a tubing. How do we prevent leak and how do we control them? 
The following approach uh, is coming from BPSA and is widely accepted in the industry. Uh, we uh, distinguish three key areas in which we want to control uh, the integrity. First is the BPC manufacturing side. We as a provider offer a validated manufacturing process and a certain number of in-house testing uh, that I will describe in the coming slide. Of course, our operators are trained for best practice for handling and packaging in order not to damage assemblies during transfer on the line. Once the assembly is finished, uh, the, uh, it is packaged in a double poly bags and added into a cardboard. Is this uh, Transportation must be validated in order to avoid any issue during transportation. Once it's on your site, there is a number of good practice to adopt in order not to damage the assemblies. Uh, on the manufacturing site, um, as I explained previously, uh, our operators and our engineer have developed a some error-proof manufacturing process based on practical process improvement derived from the lean. Um, they avoid to have mistakes with detailed drawings, and there is a number of in-house testing such as strength test on the film, burst test on the chamber, tensile on the port to um, the film, and we can also add, if needed, an on-site integrity testing, as I will describe later on. Then, once the product is finished, uh, it is inspected for particles and packaged into a double poly bag and vacuum sealed. Before vacuum, uh, we add some protection on the filters, on the sharp part, such as clamp, um, the number of product per cardboard, the side of the box and the weight of the box is highly validated. Uh, first, for transportation, uh, we use only validated transportation, but also the weight is very important uh, in order to be compliant to the gamma radiation process. If needed, and if the process requires it, such as vaccine, um, we can uh, add a point of use integrity testing uh, by allium. Why do, did we choose to introduce allium in 2012? Just because it is a very sensible test that can detect all up to one micron or to one to two micron according to the size of the assemblies. And it's below microbial ingression and opposite to pressure decay that is less sensible. Of course, this is a non-destructive test. How does it work? The test is very simple. The assembly is included into a vacuum chamber and linked to an allium source. The air is pumped out from the bag and uh, replaced by allium. The allium is a very permeable gas that and the quantity of allium in the vacuum chamber will be measured by the mass spec. Of course, it is validated according to a whole size. And any bag above the pass-fail criteria is rejected from lot and included into the lot record visible during audit. Once on the end user side, uh, we do recommend to have a number of good practice. As a provider, we can help to train your operators. First, we recommend not to stack BPC in the warehouse uh, on metal sleeve and on the top of the other, not more than what is on the uh, the cardboard. 
Then, once you place your 3D bags into the holding vessel, um, it is recommended to inflate the bag and carefully place it in order to avoid any pleat during a filling. It is our experience that a large number of issues are due to transportation or handling on site. Thus, uh, we do recommend for a large BPC uh, or complex BPC such as mixer and bioreactors to add a point of use integrity testing, um, which can be done by pressure decay. How does it work? You simply inflate the bag and measure the pressure drop uh, into these specific assemblies. There are some systems on the market able to do this, and one of them is the Insight of Thermo Fisher. Insight is an independent system that can also help to inflate and place the bag into the holder and also do the filling of the bag at a certain control pressure. Before talking about particle management, I would like to briefly introduce our next generation 2D range uh, that will be launched at the end of the summer. Uh, it is an addition of our current 2D lab tenor chamber uh, in order to answer to some of the market requests. In fact, we have um, interviewed a total of 22 qualified bioprocessing professionals that underlined a number of issues on their 2D bags, such as robustness, leaking, extractable and leachable, which are complex to get uh, information on particulates or port connection. What have we done is we have first improved the poly bag on in which the assemblies is included. The new poly bags for the Slaptina Pro range will be manufactured in a controlled environment and will be more easy to open with an easy tier. The product uh, will include a lot-based testing on USP-788 for particle and USP-85 for endotoxin. Uh, in opposite to our current range, which are quarterly tested in a representative assemblies. The chamber itself will be manufactured in a specific system called Lumptener Automated Manufacturing System uh, in a closed way and consistent environment with a number of in-process testing. The product will be 100% helium test. We will include two handles for uh, improved uh, handling, uh, and uh, uh, we will also offer specific stack for uh, storage, product storage, but not for shipping. The ergonomic of the uh, of this new chamber uh, will be improved with a specific geometry that you can see on the screen. But we will we have also work on the chamber uh, and the port of the chamber, uh, which will include the exact number of port with the right side of the port. Thus, if you want three quarter of an inch and one three eight of an inch, it is now possible with this new product range. So just as a reminder, this is the problems underlined by our uh, professional interviewed. So we have answered by most of them with improved portings, 100% allium testing, proven robust film previously used. Uh, ENL uh, note that will include not solely the film, but also uh, the port and some of our key standard components. The cleaner packaging and the lot USB 788 testing will offer you a high quality process. We will also stock block blank chamber and offer a large standard offering on, on stock. So 
After reviewing this new range, uh, I will focus now on how to enhance particle in uh, assemblies. Particle is first uh, a matter of components. We control our components and we ask our providers to provide components uh, that are in accordance to USP 788. They arrived uh, sealed in poly bag and they are controlled to avoid large external contaminants and loose and embedded particles. The process of manufacturing the chamber is fully automated in what we call our A3D line. This is a closed line controlled with EPA filters. We do not want the process to create particles. The seals are highly controlled by time pressure and temperatures and the port loading is fully automated and done in accordance to the port size. Once this chamber is manufactured, it will go on our line zero um, production uh, zone, uh, which is a specific production area in which we highly control particles with enhanced coning for our operators, but also a uh, sucking table, a uh, vacuum table for, uh, in order to suck particles out of the process. Inspection criteria are all, at the end of the process, are also reinforced, and we do not accept visible particle at the end of this line. Relationship with our uh, end user are key for us, and we send quarterly survey to collect your input, and we will be glad to have your feedback on these really new improvements. Feedback are shared with our key stakeholder across the company and is widely listened uh, to decide on the next uh, improvement of our process and investment on our line. As a conclusion, I would like to underline that critical containment in single use is now possible and frequent. We have the solution for this. An approach has been developed and is now applied since years for integrity management. If not, we can add a point of use, helium integrity testing. We do offer particle control and our new Laptena Pro range will combine under particle and integrity. Now I would like to give the end to my colleague Anthony Perret, who will guide you through data quality and integrity in single-use manufacturing. Thanks a lot, Camille. Hello, everybody. My name is um, Anthony Perret. I am technical research specialist for uh, bioprocess equipment and automation in charge of Southwest Europe territory. So we decided to focus this uh, presentation on compliance and how to address the 21 CFR Part 11 regulation when it's about single-use automation. We will, focus, uh, we will not focus on the single-use range, um, and of course, this is not um, a 21 CFR Part 11 uh, complete course. So our job in uh, bioprocessing automation and equipment team is to offer bioprocessing single-use equipment, which will allow you to focus on your process and molecule production while providing a flexible solution with a robust and, and secure data management system. Our solution is uh, based on a robust and open uh, architecture control system. We have three different sizes of I.O. control tower uh, that you can see on the left. And we can offer benchtop and production size bioreactors and, of course, a control software complete suite uh, that we will uh, uh, detail further. So from the bottom uh, layer of sensor to the top layer of IT, our uh, objective is to, to bring flexibility, efficiency, and to reduce uh, time to market. Our control architecture is based on uh, the use of an automate called distributed control system. 
also called DCS. We selected the Emerson Delta V system, which can be used not only for one single-use vessel, but also for the control management of a complete process, like you can see on, on the right. In order to, to create a user-friendly and a reliable interface to communicate with the Delta V, we created the TrueBio software. This software is developed by some official and does not require any additional programmation on site, and this is very important. But its features are limitless to adapt to all of your needs for any process you could work on. This TrueBio software layout and control panel will adapt to any vessel. We need to control, and it will also benefit from a suite of two other uh, softwares, which are not on this layout, for the downstream processing, such as the chromatography or the filtration operations. So let's focus now on 21 CFR Part 11. What is, what is it? What are the objectives? and the different control requested, and how does uh, our platform comply? Of course, some of you working, for example, in quality department knows very well this topic. 21 CFR Part 11 regulation became a law in August 1997 to address the challenge of digitalization of documents with the rise of computer technology and issues related to the electronic records and signatures. It gives guidances to persons who have chosen to maintain the records or submit information electronically. In other words, these are guidances to ensure that electronic records and signatures are reliable, trustworthy, and as authentic as papers, which of course can still be used, hopefully. The recommended controls requested by 21 CFR can be classified in two parts. The procedurals, which is admitted to be under the user responsibility, and the technical controls, which are required for any system maintaining electronic records. So how does our TrueBio software and the Delta V Automate comply to these controls? Well, indeed, we need to address through two levels. From the distributed control system, which is the automate, who takes the decisions for the process, and the software itself, which is the user control board and the main access to the Delta, Vic, to the Delta Collected. Let's have a look now to some of the key chapters of the 21 CFR Part 11 and how does, true, um, how does sorry, the Delta V system and the TrueBio fulfill this, uh, this mission. So first, the chapter 11.10e is about the risk of altered records uh, and it's ma um, managed mainly from different security levels. The records are encrypted making no possible any modification. There is no possibility to override, to delay, to dupl duplicate the, the data and the different vessel file. Couldn't be modified or renamed. The same concept is also applied for calibration reports. Of course, the audit trail can offer the vision of any change to the system configuration. From a computer perspective, some procedural approach will be needed to define user accesses. The reproduction of records is also a critical point, where 21 CFR Part 11 is quite clear. The objective is to make possible the addition of readable documents, which are suitable for inspection, review, and copy. Here, the TrueBio offers the possibility to decrypt the vessel save files in order to print or export through the relevant format the data from process or calibrations. The Delta V operates through the Microsoft Office softwares, 
So once again, the user access management will define the access to Windows. The section 11.10c is about the protection of records along the retention period. Some official states that all records are maintained unless deleted by an administrator for as long as a computer storage allows. So our systems are robust and secured. Uh, we have a redundancy of cabling, of hard drive disks, um, so it's enough to work night and day for years. But of course, IT systems also require preventive maintenance and control to avoid any obsolescence of the installed systems. Once again, the users must put in place procedural controls such as the management of backup in case of disaster. The limitation of access is designed around locks and keys and provide authenticity and integrity. Any function can be authorized or not by the administrator as shown on this view of Delta V. The section 11.11E, sorry, 11.10E, is a guidance for audit trace. Delta V configuration audit trace offers a, na a native solution. You can easily download the relevant Emerson white paper that we that you will find on the, on the web. Section 11.10F is focused on batch operation modifications. When batch se sequences are used, then it becomes important to set up the authorization and track any changes in batch operations. This is done by the request dialog box you see on the screen. The section 11.10G is the use of authority checks. Of course, this is covered by the user management device to ensure that only authorized individuals can use the system sign a record, access the operation or computer system input or output device, or also alter a record or perform the operation at hand. Of course, the education, the training and experience is also an important chapter of the guidance. Of course, we offer public and training of the use of the TrueBio and Delta V operation system. Our preventive maintenance program also includes training modules. To be honest, the FAT and SAT also offers a good opportunity to go through all their topics. And last but not least, the signatures. Of course, this hasn't been forgotten, mainly used on our TrueBio software for the calibration records, where the name, the date, the time, the stamp of the indiv individual perform performing will be written. The electronic signature is an, int an integral part of the batch history and records. Of course, there is no possibility of modification, deletion of a record. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much, Anthony, for those insights. So, uh, dear audience, um, we're coming uh, close to the end of that uh, of that webinar. We will move to the Q&A section now. So, don't forget if you have not uh, used the dialog box uh, of Workcast to populate your, your questions yet, is the right time to do it before we uh, take your questions. Um, I would like to to have a final word to um, explain that we, we took uh, the focus on those 
essential aspects of ensuring compliance with single-use systems, which are managing uh, the cleanliness and certification of rigid uh, single-use systems, as well as ensuring uh, quality, uh, integrity, and supply of flexible single-use systems and allowing uh, data integrity and data security. But there is far more to it. Um, obviously, and uh, within uh, the capabilities of Thermo Fisher, from an analytical perspective, there's also a variety of, of tools to uh, ensure your, your compliance, and, uh, and also in the area of raw material management, which you, you will have the opportunity to, to discuss at, at other occasions with our teams. So with that, let me uh, thank you one more time, thank our speakers, and let's move on to uh, your questions now. Let's have a look at them. Hi, and thank you all for joining our webinar. Uh, we have um, our first question from the audience. Um, to move from glass bottles for long-term storage of drug substance in solution to single-shot Nalgene bottles for this storage, are there any scientific arguments that can simplify the realization of stability studies, or should new ICH studies have to be performed with these single-use containers? Um, Alan, can you maybe answer that question? I can. Thanks, Remco. Um, yeah, un unfortunately, um, the, the you know introducing new uh, products into established processes comes with a certain regulatory burden. Um, I'm pleased that the, uh, the, the, the whoever answer, asked the question recognises that there's some distinct advantages with moving from. Uh, reuse of glass bottles to, to, to single use, but yeah, there's still a, a regulatory burden to revalidate these and stability studies would be one of those aspects. For many of the products we use in the bioprocess environment, of course, we do have a head start. We, we have some, um, we have extract, extractable studies on, on um, many of our popular lines, but yes, um, leachable studies and stability studies and so forth must be uh, revalidated, I'm afraid. Thank you, Alan. Uh, I hope that answers your question. If not, please, please feel free to ask an additional question and, and to the audience. Um, if you're on the on the screen, just press the button, ask a question, and submit your question to um, to be answered live in this Q and A session. Uh, another question. This one for um, Camille. Um, Camille, why would you recommend pressure decay for on-site testing and not helium? Um, thank you, Remco. So there is two reasons uh, behind this. First of all, uh, helium, even if the technique is simple, uh, the system is not and uh, would be quite complex to implement uh, on site. Then the second reason is based on our experience, the issue on single use bags that need to be detected on site are mainly due to transportation and handling. Thus, um, that mean a large all that can be detected by more simple systems such as pressure decay. I hope this answers the question. Great, thank you, Camille. <clears throat> um, there is a follow-up question coming in from um, uh, Renault um, regarding integrity and part particles. Uh, management for um, single-use solutions, if transportation is validated and if warehouse handling is uh, managed in the right way, could we consider that the testing performed by Thermo Fisher in the manufacturing site are sufficient to guarantee integrity of single-use systems in the user site? Um, yes. Uh, if transportation is validated and if uh, handling by warehouse but also by production operators uh, is validated uh, even though it may be difficult to validate this uh, I would more use training um, it is 
uh, sufficient to uh, guarantee uh, integrity. Uh, nevertheless, for a large bag, and in particular uh, 3D bags, if you are on sterile process, I would always recommend to implement a pressure decay test uh, because uh, it's you never know if the operators can do a mistake or not. So having a pressure decay uh, on site will guarantee that the placement of the bag is always done uh, on the best manner. And it is a request that we received more and more. Great. Thank you, Camille. And, and and overall, uh, would you say that you see the number of requests on on bag integrity um, is is increasing? Yes, uh, more and more. Um, we received the question when I'm going on a daily basis uh, to see when I'm seeing my customer on a daily basis. Uh, I often received this question. Uh, why? Simply because single-use technology are more and more used on the downstream part of the process. It is not solely used now to uh, store buffer, uh, which is a less sensible part, um, but more and more in the downstream process and to store final product. So our customer would um, are requesting uh, to have uh, security on uh, integrity of the bag. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Please feel free to submit them through the Ask a Question box. I'm not seeing any additional questions coming in. Um, so with that, I would like to thank uh, the, the presenters of today for, for their presentation, and of course, thank the, the audience for, uh, for joining our Knowledge Culture webinar. Uh, we will be sure to send out a link to the, to the recording shortly. Thank you very much, and have a great day.